Hello and welcome back to the Indescribable God and to another exciting episode on Understanding the Great I Am. Today I am going to share about the life of Jacob. The reason I have taken on the topic of Jacob is because he is a very misunderstood person in the Bible. I always wondered why would the Lord of all people choose this guy to be the one through whom the lineage of Jesus came about? Why him compared to Esau when Esau is a much better character? Now, the the life of Jacob starts from chapter 25 of Genesis. Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebecca. After they got married, just like Sarah was barren, so also Rebecca was barren. And so Isaac prayed for her and after 20 years of being barren, finally she conceived and she bore two sons. During the time when she was pregnant, she always found restlessness in her womb and then she asked the Lord, that Lord, why is there so much of restlessness in my womb? Is everything okay? And the Lord told her that there are two nations that will be born through you and the older will serve the younger. Originally, when Jacob was named Jacob, it was because he came out of the womb holding Esau's heel. And because of that, it meant to follow or to be behind. So that was the reason he was called Jacob. It is much later after he takes the birthright of Esau and he takes the blessings of Esau and then the situation with Laban and all that, he is called the supplanter, the one to, who circumvents, the one who overreaches. These terms were linked with that name much later, but the original reason why his name was Jacob was because he was following his brother. After that, the verse goes on to say that the boys grew. And Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, but Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. So now let's envision this. Let's picture this, okay? Here is Esau, a guy who's really hairy, okay, and who is very strong and rugged, okay? And uh, he loves to hunt. Okay? So he's always going hunting, catching animals and all. And every time he comes home with his kill, he cooks it up and he, you know, serves it to his dad. So his dad loved that. The reason his father loved him more than Jacob is because Esau is what you would call a manly person. Rugged, tough, going out into the field, hunting, not afraid of things. That is why Isaac loved Esau more than Jacob. Because Jacob, on the other hand, was very timid and quiet and he wanted to be at home and he would go with the sheep in the fields and all to graze and all that stuff. He didn't like heavy work where he has to run and kill animals and all that stuff. He was more of a shepherd. But because he was this kind of a person, I'm sure that when he was at home, he was more of a help to his mother, you know, which is why Rachel loved him because she would get help from him and support from him. Whereas Isaac loved Esau because he was more of a man. So this is the difference between the two of them, you know, their personalities and their character. Now, it further goes on to the situation about Esau selling his birthright. Now, Jacob cooked a stew and Esau came in from the field and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with some red stew for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank and arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The first revelation I got in this, okay, is both these guys were not kids. They were grown men with an understanding of what is the value of a birthright. Obviously, they were not children because when you talk about the birthright, you're talking about inheriting everything from your father. You're talking about uh, inheriting property, inheriting uh, cattle, inheriting all the wealth of your father. So you have to be mature enough to understand what you are getting or what you are losing. So 
both of them had to be people who are a little mature to understand the importance of the birthright. That's the first revelation I got. Second revelation I got is that when I had watched a movie about Jacob years ago when I was a child, okay, they depicted Jacob as a child, all right, and he was hardly shown as a boy of, you know, maybe 9, 10 years old, and his brother was shown as a child of maybe, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old, but that didn't happen as children. It could not have happened as children because as I said earlier, you need to be mature enough to understand what you're selling. That's the first thing. Second of all is that both of them were twins so obviously you can't have twins looking one like a 10 year old child and one like a 15 year old child twins don't look so drastically different yes both can be one can be big made one can be small made you know a petite figure as well as a rugged tough figure which is what they were but they both were of the same age so even physically they were the same age Okay, the third revelation I got is that Jacob could not have suddenly got up, okay, and decided I'll make lentils too and when my brother comes, I'll tempt him with it and then when he's tempted, I will tell him, give me your birthright, you know, I'll force him to sell it to me and take it. It could not be a sudden decision from on Jacob's part. In all probability, I know the Bible doesn't say this, but in all probability, if you look at children, even today, okay, I've got two kids and my boy is nine. My daughter is 13 and both of them keep bargaining over things. And my son, um, between the two of them, my son is a big bully. So he always bullies my daughter and gets things from her. So he'll, he, if she wants him to do something and she'll tell him, okay, can you do this for me? Or, you know, don't tell mommy the secret or whatever. He will say, what am I going to get? Ah, if you want me to do it, you have to give me something. Only then I'm going to do it. And if you notice, children are like that. So in all probability, as they were growing, Jacob is not like Esau. Esau is always going hunting and, you know, uh, very vigorous, very physically active. Okay, though Esau was strong and rugged, he probably always came home tired and exhausted. Whereas Jacob was always a person who was at home. He was with the sheep and he would be at home most of the time. So he is the kind of person who was not so tired and exhausted. So he had the strength to keep making food and all that stuff. So he probably was always, you know, having something or another done in the house. And Esau would come home and probably constantly keep asking him for something or another. And they were probably always trading in this way as children. And it could be, okay, I'm not saying it is, but it could be, all right, that it came to a point where probably there was nothing much left for Esau to give. Because everything he probably must have just said, okay, fine, take it, take the shirt. Okay, fine, you want the shoes, take the shoes, just give me that thing. Okay, you want this, take this, you know. So it probably came to a point where Jacob must have felt that there's nothing that Esau can give me that I don't have of his. Practically most of the things I have and the other things what he has I don't want. So that's why this time when Esau came, Jacob asked him for his birthright. Now, it's very interesting to see what exactly went on in the conversation. Esau comes back, okay, and he is tired. It's possible that he didn't have a kill this particular day and that he came home and he didn't have anything with which he could cook his own meal, which is why he probably asked Jacob for his meal. Now, if Jacob has cooked a meal, it means that he's old enough to cook. So Esau came home, he was tired and he was hungry, which is why he says, please feed me some red stew for I am weary. And then Jacob answers and tells me, sell me a birthright as of this day. This is the part that gets interesting. Esau says, look, I'm about to die. So what is this birthright to me? This is the mistake that Esau makes. Esau's thinking is very, very small. All he saw in that moment, okay, was that I need to eat something. What is the use if I'm dead? But nobody has died on this earth, okay, by skipping one meal or even a meal for a whole day and surviving only on water. So it shows you how, you know, careless Esau really is. This particular verse shows you how careless and, you know, he had no value for what was rightfully his. He had to really sit down and think before he gave this answer and say, oh, I'm going to die anyway. You don't die just because you skipped one meal. You feel dog hungry, yes, but you don't die. 
and because Esau had no value for what was rightfully his, he just blatantly sold it to Jacob. Now, the important thing here is to notice is Jacob only said, sell me your birthright as of this day. He said, sell me your birthright. He never said that he is going to hold a gun to his head or he is going to tell him that, no, uh, if you don't give me the birthright, you know, then uh, you see what I'm going to do. He didn't challenge him. He didn't force him. He gave him a fair deal. He told him, sell it to me and I'll give you my lentil. It was a trade between the two of them. There was no force on the side of jo Jacob. But Esau was careless enough not to consider what he was giving up. He gave it up and he said, okay. And then he conveniently ate his food, drank his drinks. He got up and he left. And in this way, he despised his birthright. Now, what is the meaning of the word despised? To feel contempt or a deep repugnance for. To not have value for that and just not want it in the first place. You see, Esau did not really realize what he was giving away. And he didn't care about it. He was like, oh, being the first child probably had a lot of responsibilities. You know, being the eldest son had a lot of responsibilities. And he probably despised it because of the responsibilities that had come on him. So he never saw it as something to be valued. So this statement, okay, of Esau's is what completely took him out of the position of getting the birthright and getting the blessings of his father. If you notice what Jacob said, he said, swear to me as of this day. He never said, put it in writing and give it to me. He said, swear to me because in those days, your word was you. If your word was spoken, it had to be carried out. And the witness for both of them was God. So it was not... A person who was witnessing what Esau gave up and what Jacob won. God observed it and it went in record in God's books that Esau gave his birthright in exchange for a bowl of soup. And that is why God is the one who was upset with Esau in that moment. And he, he, he was completely disappointed in Esau. Which is why he did not choose Esau. You see the character of Esau is depicted in this. He is careless, okay, he can be easily manipulated, okay, he can be easily cheated, he has no value for things. It shows that he is impulsive, doesn't think before doing something. This depicts a lot about Esau which does not come out when you just first read through it. But when you really sit and you meditate on the word and you ask the Lord to show you, then you get this revelation. Now, this part, okay, is where the birthright of Esau has been sold to, to Jacob. I'll stop at this point, okay, and we'll continue in the next series about what happens next in Jacob's life. Well, that's all for today. I hope you had a wonderful time. And um, join me on the next episode of Jacob. Till then, I will say good night and have a wonderful day.